Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum time to repair cars. And before we get into it, I feel obligated to mention the fact that the last few problems that we've solved on the channel are pretty heavily related to today's problem. So if you uh, struggled with those, or if you didn't watch those videos or solve those problems, highly recommend it. But anyways, let's get into this problem, which is going to basically be the exact same binary search pattern, where instead of doing binary search on a data structure, like an array, that's typically how we do binary search usually. Instead, this binary search pattern is to, uh, rather than applying this to an array, we're going to apply this to a range, or sometimes I call it a search space, because that's the whole idea behind binary search. You're running binary search on some data, but the data doesn't have to be a data structure. It could be just some range of values, and that's what this pattern is going to be. It's going to involve a little math, so let's get into the problem description. The idea here is that we're given a bunch of ranks, and so in this example, I think we just have four, three, two, one. And we're also given a parameter cars. So that's just going to be a number. In this case, that is going to be 10. What the ranks represent is kind of the opposite of what you would expect. Uh, for example, they give us this equation here. And basically, the entire problem centers around this equation. If you are decent at math, you should be able to simplify it pretty quickly. If not, it's a little bit tricky, so don't worry too much about it. So we have R times N squared. So what they say is that we're given a bunch of mechanics. So these numbers represent the ranks of every mechanic, which is basically like a person who's going to be fixing the cars. We need to fix 10 cars, and this equation tells us how quickly each mechanic is going to be able to fix those cars given the rank of that mechanic. So, and just to make it very, very clear, the higher the rank of a mechanic, the slower that they will work. So a high rank means they work slower. So this equation over here, let's over here on the left, say uh, the minute versus the number of cars that they can uh, fix for any given mechanic. So what this equation represents, because it's very important to understand this part, this is probably where a lot of people are going to make mistakes, myself somewhat included, n is going to be the number of cars. So it's kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. You plug one in. So uh, for the first mechanic, let's say I'm looking at this mechanic who has a rank of four. So I can put four in for the r. For n here, how long is it going to take them to do one car? So for n, I want to do one initially. I'm going to put one in, so I'm going to do one squared, and that's just going to be four times one, so that's four. So what that means is that in one minute, um, oh, I guess I'll put that over here on the left, the number of cars, we plugged one into the number of cars for n, and the number that we got out, four. So that means it takes them four minutes to do one car. You can see even I'm kind of almost messing up here because it's so much like the opposite of what you would have expected. But anyways, to do two cars, how long will it take them? Well, let's just plug two in here. We get two squared times four. You can see how this is just a constant. So we're going to have four times four. It takes them 16 minutes to do two cars. And let's plug three in now. So three squared, that's going to be nine times four. We get 36. So it takes 36 minutes to do three cars. To make it very clear, this means that after a total of 36 minutes, it, they would get three cars in total. So in some ways, it's like they're slowing down as they go. Okay, so now we understand what this equation actually means. So now let's get into the binary search part of this solution. The first thing we're going to do is set up our search space. We're going to have the low and the upper bound. So once we have that, then we can start running binary search on this space. It's going to involve a brute force component to the problem. That part actually, in some ways, is the tricky part. It does involve a little bit of math. I'll try to explain it. But just setting up our range right now, it's usually safe to assume that one is good for the starting spot. I guess I should start with what this range actually represents. Remember, what we're trying to do is given these mechanics and given 10 cars, we want to know how much total time is it going to take for us to do all 10 of the cars with these four mechanics, and this is the rank of each mechanic. Well, we know that 
Since if this is not a linear problem, it's going to take some effort for us to figure that out. We can't just calculate it in constant time. Actually, now that I think about it, I don't think it's the non-linear nature that causes this. I think it's mostly the fact that we have many different mechanics and each one of them has a somewhat different equation. Uh, but anyways, for the amount of time, like they're probably not going to be able to do it in less than one minute. I assume that a minute is our smallest unit that we're working with. So I think one is probably a safe number to put here for the lower bound. So let's do that. We have one here. But what's the upper bound going to be? This is another tricky part. What is the maximum amount of time it could take for us to do all 10 cars? Well, again, it's non-linear. So it seems like it's not super straightforward, but think about it again for a second. What does this equation tell us? Given some number of cars, it tells us how much time it would take a given mechanic to do those cars. So we could actually do this. We could pick any mechanic, pick any of them. After we do that, we calculate the amount of time it would take for that mechanic, just that single mechanic, and how much time would it take them to do all 10 cars? And I can say that that is a good upper bound because I know that either I just have a single person available in the first place, and then I can calculate how much time it would take that mechanic to do all of the cars, or I have multiple mechanics available to me in which case that upper bound will never be exceeded because if we have multiple mechanics, then the actual answer will be somewhere in between. Thus, I think it's a good upper bound to pick a single mechanic and just calculate how much time it would take them to do all 10 cars. Whether we pick the fastest one or the slowest one, uh, it doesn't really matter. This is the slowest, this is the fastest. But either way, it wouldn't matter to us because all of them will be working at the same time. But we're just simulating if one of them were working to give us a decent upper bound. So uh, to, for us to do that, we can just plug it into this equation. We know that for this mechanic, this guy over here with a rank of four, if we wanna do 10 cars, we can do 10 squared. So that's gonna be a hundred. So I believe 400 would be a pretty good upper bound uh, for the time here. So that's how I'm doing that. So now that we have our range set up, we have a hundred and we have 400. I got that by the way, just taking a rank and uh, taking the cars, squaring that. And now I'm gonna run binary search on this and that's gonna involve calculating the midway point, which in this iteration is going to be halfway. So I think 200 is good. And this 200 represents the time in this case. We wanna know how much time would it take us to do all 10 cars. We wanna know the minimum amount of time. So now what we want to know is, is this middle value good or not? Because if this middle value is good, then what we're going to do is start searching to the left of it because we're trying to find the smallest time that will allow us to repair 10 cars. So if this is good, if I give this a green, then we start searching on the left. We can shift uh, the right pointer, which right now would be at 400, and we can shift it to be mid minus one. Otherwise, if this is not good, that means that 200 minutes is not enough time for us to repair all 10 cars. Then we need even more time. So we would shift our left pointer from here to be mid plus one because we need even more time than 200. We're going to start searching on the other side of it. So th that's going to be the general idea here. Now, this part involves a bit of math, I guess. How do we calculate the time? Or sorry, not calculate the time. How do we calculate the number of cars. So if I give you 200 minutes and these are the mechanics that we have, this is the rank of each of them, how do I know how much time it takes for them to repair cars? Well, uh, that's just a matter of solving this equation here on the right side. I guess I'll go ahead and do it. So we're just going to solve for n because we know n represents the number of cars. So we can divide both sides by r. We get the rank over here. I guess I'll spell it out this time. And then we just have n squared here. We can just square root this side and then we are good. Now, what does this represent? It should tell us the number of cars we can do in this much time. So this will be plugged in over here. And then the rank we have to take individually because every individual mechanic is going to be able to do a different amount. So we're going to have to basically calculate this equation 
n times, where, well, in this case, n means the number of mechanics. So for every mechanic, we have to calculate this equation. And then we sum all of those up, and that sum will tell us how many cars we can do in 200 minutes. If that sum is meeting this threshold, then we're good. Otherwise, we are not good, and we will have to update our binary search accordingly. So that's the whole idea here. In this problem, I think 200 is going to be obviously good because I think just to do one quick iteration of this, the first mechanic is going to be square root of time, which is 200 divided by 4. And then the next mechanic is going to be 200 divided by 3, et cetera, et cetera. I think one of these terms is probably bigger than 10. Since uh, this is good, we will then shift our right pointer here. So our next range would be something like this, 1 and 199, because now we're looking for smaller numbers than 200. Is there a time even smaller than 200, which will allow us to do all 10 cars? I think there probably is. I think 100 is going to work, and then we're going to get down to 50. 50 is going to work as well. And then eventually, I think we're going to go down, like our range should be something like this, 1 to 25. And then I think the solution to this first example should be, I think 16 minutes should be enough for them to do all 10 cars. So that, that's the main idea behind this problem and this solution. I think the time complexity is going to be n, where n is the number of mechanics that we're given. And then log, uh, the right number that we had was something like this, where we had the rank multiplied by the number of cars squared. So I don't know how to do that. I guess I'll just do r times c squared. And the rank is just any rank from the input. But anyways, I think this is probably precise enough. Okay, so just doing the initial setup, we have our left and right pointer. I will initialize it to one, and then the right pointer will just take the first rank, so ranks at index zero, multiply it by cars squared, so cars times cars. Again, this is just filling in the equation that they gave us. So this is the amount of time it would take one mechanic to do all of the cars. And now we can run binary search within this range. I'll just initialize my result to some random value. In this case, it doesn't really matter how we do this. So I'll just do it like this. And then while the pointers have not crossed each other, for me, this is kind of just muscle memory. Calculating the midway point, we don't really care about overflow. So we just do left plus right divided by two. I'm going to have a helper function, I guess. We don't really need to, but I will anyway, to give me the repaired count. So I guess I'll just call it count repaired. So we'll pass in a function, passing in the time in this case, m is the time that we have. How many cars can we repair in that amount of time? If the repaired count is greater than or equal to the threshold, which is just the total number of cars that we're given, if that's the case, that's good. We can update our result to this time then we can shift our right pointer so that the time can be less than this. Otherwise, we'll do the opposite. We did not find a satisfactory time, so we need to increase the threshold. We need to set our left pointer to be mid plus one so that we can look for bigger values. We're guaranteed that this condition will execute at least once, so this will execute. And I think I saw a comment on the previous video where people said, well, how do you know that this will actually work on the last iteration? It's kind of a proof by contradiction. I think I've talked about it before uh, in some videos, but think about this. If I have like some numbers like this, eventually we're going to get to a point where we only have a uh, one or two values remaining. So if this was my array, eventually we'll get to a point where we only have two values remaining. If I had set my right pointer to mid minus one, then I basically said that, well, the mid result that we had was valid, but now we're looking for other valid results that are even smaller than the one that we saw. Either we will find one, there will be one that's smaller and valid, or we will not find anything that is smaller and also valid, in which case uh, this will keep executing and thus the result will never be updated. So it does work if you think about it and you run it on a few examples, it'll work on every single edge case and that's because it has to work. It's a, like a mathematical thing that you can prove. Now, finally, to fill in this last function, I think you can probably do it on your own if you try, but I'll go ahead and do it now. Count repaired, we're given a parameter, I'll call it time. We wanna know how many we can repair in this time. I guess I'll have a variable, I'll call it count for that. We'll return the count. And for us to calculate it, we go through every rank in the input. And that equation I was talking about 
which to be honest, I don't remember off the top of my head. Looking at the drawing, it said we have the square root of time divided by the rank. So I'm doing integer division here with the double slashes. So this will turn into an integer. And I don't think that's even necessary. I think it did work when I had that, but I don't think that that's necessary. We can just take the square root and then convert that into an integer and then add that to the result. So we will have summed the contribution of every single mechanic. We know the total number of cars we can do, and we will return that down here. And of course, I forgot the S, so the typo. And I also called this result when it should be count, bad habit. But now you can see that this code does indeed work and it is pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, check out Neatcode.io for a lot more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.